Hello, my name is Dr. Jeff Averly, and I want to introduce to you today the Arconia FX635. This is a low-level laser therapy device that puts out uh, these red laser lines that actually have a therapeutic effect on the body. And so what this, this introductory video is for is to show you how this works and how it works on a cellular level to improve health conditions and to improve the overall health of the body. It's absolutely amazing. So this device right here has three lasers, and hopefully you can see them in this better. They don't show up real, up real well on white paper. But there's a red line laser there, there's another one there, and there's another one there. And you can adjust these in many different angles and positions to get, to get them wherever you want to go. But what you're doing is you're exposing the body to this low-level light therapy, low-level laser therapy. And the, the name, FX 635, 635 stands for the wavelength of the light. So this red light is 635 nanometers. That's one of the critical things. And you can also set this flash rate on them too, which has a different therapeutic uh, effect as well. So low-level laser therapy. This is amazing. If you start researching this, you're going to find all kinds of uh, really cool stuff. So role of low-level laser therapy in neuro, neuro rehabilitation. So this is actually using the lasers on the brain. You can put these on the head specifically. I'm doing it for 20 minutes. 10 minutes one way, 10, 10 minutes the other way. It's great. So here's a whole article on that. And these are MDs and PhDs doing this research. They're not chiropractors. MDs and PhDs, they have more clout than as chiropractors. I gotta admit, that's fine. They're the ones doing the research and saying this stuff is working, uh, working great for all kinds of things. So this you can actually look up. It's called The Role of Low-Level Low Level Laser Therapy in Neuro Rehabilitation. It's on PubMed. It's a free article. Uh, this one here is on wound healing. So uh, these lasers are actually can be used in veterinarians' offices as well. They have specific ones for animals. Um, but wound healing, wound healing in people, after surgery, before surgery. You get faster healing times by exposing people to red light. Even third degree burns. I've heard amazing stories about burns and using the lasers to help with, um, with healing and pain relief. Here's another one, photobiomodulation. That's another terminology, another word you can use, photobiomodulation. So you're using light photo for biological um, um, enhancement. So this is a photobiomodulation in human muscle tissue, an advantage in sports performance. That's the exact name. Again, the abstract is on, uh, actually the full article is on uh, PubMed. So this is like a 44 page article. I didn't print out the whole thing. Um, and they're actually talking about laser doping. <laughs> so, cause it's a, such an advantage. This is on low level laser therapy in Russia. This is a great article. Because in Russia, they have been using low-level lasers since 1974 as a standard of care. Standard of care. you got to understand, in America here, what are standards of care? Well, you go in, you get antibiotics. That's a common standard of care, right? Um, so there's just different things in America that we all know about. you got, you got something, uh, bronchitis or something like that, you're probably going to get an antibiotic if they determine it's a bacterial Thing, right but over in Russia standard of care is lasers I don't know what other standards of care they have over there too but they're they're well known over there probably everyone in the country knows about these lasers you come to America and everyone's like what I don't understand what those are so lasers can be used in many different ways they can be used in this way but most of you probably realize that lasers can be used to burn off tattoos right now those are much more powerful Burning off a tattoo hurts. I've heard it's very painful. Getting a tattoo hurts. Uh, these you don't even feel. You don't even feel them. But you feel the effects of them, either right afterwards or oftentimes even during a treatment. You can also use lasers uh, for LASIK surgery, right? For the eyes, for eye correction, uh, sight, distance and stuff. So they'll use lasers for that. They'll use lasers for hair removal. Clearly you can use lasers in industry uh, for cutting things. So lasers is a broad category of what's going on. This is, like I say, low-level laser, low-level laser therapy or cold laser. I don't really like the term cold laser because it's not cold, right? But it's not hot either. So I like low-level laser therapy or LLLT or even 3LT. So there's always different names for it. 
photobiomodulation is another name. And the, uh, the Russian article, you ought to get this, it's called Low Level Laser Therapy in Russia, colon, History, Science, and Practice. I have it right on my website if you want to get it. Um, I just have the abstract and then a, a link to, uh, I think it's a PubMed article too, it's free. So you can get that and read all about it. They too are using the same parameters as this machine. Very low energy um, and uh, same wavelengths. That's what they're finding is the most effective. And they've been doing it since 1974. You gotta understand, lasers were developed in 1964. And years, so for a whole bunch of uh, years after that, they did a lot of research and figured out how critical lasers were. Russia went on and they've been using it since. Uh, the rest of the world kind of went a different route. Uh, more drug therapy is what it seems to be, um, you know, in our country. So low-level laser therapies work on this concept that they're actually working at the cellular level, and that's an important thing to explain to people. It all comes down to energy creation in our body. Trillions of cells in your body. I've heard estimates, I think, two to four to five, six trillion cells. Thought, or, yeah, trillion cells. And so all these cells in your body, except red blood cells, we're not talking about those, but all the other cells in your body have uh, organelles, little things called mitochondria within, within the cell. And you can have hundreds of mitochondria within each cell. I've heard up to 2,000 mitochondria in a cell. So the mitochondria are very, very small, but they play this key role in that they finish the digestive process of our body and they do this energy conversion, which is absolutely necessary for life. So the final energy that the body uses is called ATP. It stands for adenosine triphosphate. You never have to hear that word again. ATP is the energy of the body, just like gasoline is the energy in a car or a truck, right? But that energy has to come from somewhere and has to be converted. For us humans, it comes from the food that we eat and that there's energy stored in the bonds between atoms. But we can't use that. Luckily, we chew the food, we eat it, it goes down, gets digested, broken down more into smaller and smaller pieces, and eventually gets inside our cells, still not usable by the body, but the mitochondria can use them, can use that, and then convert it into ATP, which is what we want. Now, if you've heard of mitochondria before, it's probably from grade school or high school, or if you went into some type of biology in, in, in college of some kind. Some kind. But the mitochondria, what they teach you in grade school and high school is they're the powerhouse of the cell. And that's all they teach you because to know anything more gets into biochemistry. And you got so many other parts of a cell to learn and then doing dissections, all this other stuff. They don't go into any more detail. But the mitochondria, they do this conversion process to get ATP. And without the mitochondria, we just wouldn't be able to live. So mitochondria are important. Now, if you get even a little bit deeper into the mitochondria, they need an enzyme called cytochrome C oxidase. Again, another word you never have to say again. <laughs> but the cytochrome C oxidase is critical in this multi-step conversion to make ATP. ATP is the fundamental goal. If you don't have cytochrome C oxidase, you can't make the whole path transition to ATP. But what can happen to cytochrome C oxidase, and remember, you've got this in abundance, but you have to talk when you're discussing this, you have to talk individual molecules here. So you have a cytochrome C oxidase, working great, until one day a nitric oxide molecule gets stuck in it, and it binds to it, and it renders the cytochrome C oxidase useless. It's not destroyed, it's not damaged, it just doesn't work. So that molecule cannot be used now to make energy until a photon from the lasers, or just a photon of red light, hits the cytochrome C oxidase and it kicks off the nitric oxide. And then immediately, it can start making the energy again in that process. Now remember, you've got trillions and trillions of these molecules in your body, right? If you have trillions of cells, and every cell has 100 to 2,000 mitochondria, and every mitochondria, who knows how many cytochrome C oxidase molecules it has in it, but it's thousands, of, easily thousands of them, probably millions, maybe even trillions, I don't know. When you start talking molecules, man, the numbers get astronomically high. So you've got a lot of these in there. If you just lose one of them to a nitric oxide, you're never gonna feel it. But start saying you start losing trillions of these. And you're not losing them, they're just bound. But now you do laser, the low-level laser therapy and you unbind all those and immediately your body can start making a lot more energy in those cells wherever the light was exposed to free up the cytochrome C oxidase. 
I know it seems a little confusing, but it all comes down to energy production. And tight muscles can often be from low energy production. The other really cool thing is even after the lasers are removed, the effects are still there. Because all the light did was knock off the nitric oxide. And now that molecule is free to do what it needs to do. So you don't, so the, ther the therapy lasts. Otherwise you'd have to have lasers on you 24 seven and who wants to do that, right? So the whole thing comes down to energy production in the body and this conversion from the biggest macromolecules that you put in your mouth to start chewing all the way down to the microscopic molecules that you then have to tear apart molecularly and convert to ATP. And that's what our mitochondria do for us. The powerhouse of the cell is a perfect term to simply describe mitochondria. It's great. So that's what low-level laser therapy does. That's what red light actually does. I just I love this system. It's great. I find uh, changes in people within minutes, and I can usually freak them out quite a bit when I, when I put it on a tight area, and they feel that tight area, and they feel it looser even even after a few minutes of exposure to the to the uh, lasers. I say it doesn't hurt. You don't even feel it, um, but you feel the effects of it usually quite quickly. And so there's key areas that I figured out: front of the hips, back of the knees. You do those spots of the laser and people's entire bodies relax more. And I'm gonna go into that in another video. It involves talking about fascia and different things of the body. So I'll show that in a different video, but it's really, really neat. So the types of things that you're gonna see these lasers being used on in the future here, I, I, I don't even think they have a clue all the different things it can be used for. If they could get a hold of the Russian, Russian research, they might be able to have a better idea because they've had 40 or 50 years to figure out all the different uh, uses for low-level laser. So what I urge you to do is uh, do some more research on this. But when you're looking up low-level lasers, make sure that you um, are actually in the same power levels. So the um, terminology out there is very confusing. Um, and so what, what some people will call a low-level laser is actually a one-watt laser. I'm like, well, that's not low-level laser at all. One watt compared to 0 0.0175, it's a big difference. So when you start getting up into these higher power levels, it's not as good of results. The low power, a little longer time is great. The cells love it, they make energy, a whole bunch of health benefits have occur. And I'm only talking about the energy production part of it as a health benefit. There's a lot more going on there um, that is, is really, really nice. So when you start doing research on that, uh, you're, you're welcome to you know, go look and, and play around with that stuff and, and see what you can find. And just be careful of those power levels. Um, so anyway, I hope that answers some questions for you, but I really wanted to introduce the Erconia FX635 as a, um, a tool that we have in our office to help people with a lot of different problems. And if you have any questions about it, just give us a call or uh, uh, shoot us a comment on YouTube or Facebook, whichever or wherever you're watching the uh, video at. So um, again, my name is Dr. Jeff Aberly, and thanks for watching and have a good day.